It's been said that he or she who sings prays twice. And I have always believed that music has nurtured the spirits of God's people. Uh, and so music has a way of inviting, I believe, uh, people into a deeper understanding, a deeper faith of God. St. Paul's has historically been a place where the community has been welcomed to celebrate the musical gifts, both of those within our community and those from beyond it. On Ash Wednesday, which was February the 21st, 1844, the church caught fire and burned to the ground. June 24th of the same year, the cornerstone of the present cathedral was laid with full Masonic honors by Bishop John Strawn, who was the Bishop of Toronto in the day. On Ash Wednesday, February the 25th, 1946, some 12 years later, the present church was dedicated. Originally, the church extended one full window past where the current nave is, and its east wall featured a small half-octagonal apse. In 1869, that apse was removed and was replaced by a, a chancel, which was large enough to accommodate a choir and clergy area, as well as an organ loft. I have been an organist uh, for 35 years. I started studying when I was 12, uh, right here on this instrument and I played my first church service right around the same time. St. Paul's is a place that for me awakens a sense of spirituality and sacredness uh, that is set apart from the pace of the rest of the world. Uh, a sense of history is in this place. For over 180 years people have come in a whole host, host of ways and life circumstances and found faith and nearness and presence of God in the midst of their joys and celebrations, and their trials and their challenges. I feel like I'm sharing an experience with people that they may never have experienced in their lives before, or might never uh, experience again. And uh, to add to that, I think that uh, in downtown London, we've certainly got a lot of wonderful music events going on here really brings the community together and gives people something to celebrate. Uh, London is full of great artists, great talent, uh, so it's a great place to be. Things sort of fell apart on February 13th, 1895. There was a fire and the church burned to the ground. The congregation here at Dundas Street Center went right to work to build a new church. And in May of 1896, this church was dedicated. I joined the London Community Orchestra in uh, early 2007. The London Community Orchestra started rehearsing at Dundas Street Center United Church in fall of 2010. Most of our rehearsals um, for the orchestra are in um, an auditorium in the church. And when we do come in here, it's kind of like, like that's the cue that everything is getting ready. This church is an amazing place for the orchestra to rehearse and perform in. Um, we're a community orchestra, so our members are all um, amateur musicians. We play for the love of it. Um, we play because we want to be part of something that's in the community. And the church is part of the community too. So we're a community organization playing in this community-focused church. And part of what we do at our concerts contributes to this community-based um, service that they run, which I think is really neat. This church is, has been given a priority one designation, which means it's one of the most significant heritage structures in London. And the feeling you get when you come in here with the lights on or the sun coming through the window, I've not had that experience in any other church in London, or not many places in the world for that matter. It's truly unique for how it makes you feel.